The last time I went deep into how to sit on a chair and how to adjust everything for an optimal setup, but I never went too deep on what to do with this, how to move your shoulder, how to move your mouse and so on. So this time I want to go in depth on all the different things you need to move in order to make your mouse move. There's two categories of movements you can make, horizontal and vertical movements, but they can be split into the subcategories of big movements and small movements. Let's start by diving into big horizontal motion. First, let's get into pivoting, pivot points, all that stuff. This is a pivot. It's just the rotation of your forearm. It's one of the two main ways you can achieve a horizontal wide motion. A lot of people like to rotate their forearms on a fixed pivot point that does not move. However, you can actually move the pivot point around, and in the vertical section I'll explain why this is actually not only cool, but optimal. The other type of wide horizontal movement is just swinging your arm out and in in order to create some kind of horizontal movements. This isn't its own strategy or independent of pivots or some kind of like separate aim style. It's just another motion that will happen when you try to move your arm horizontally. If you don't already do something like either of these, instead of really thinking about it and thinking too much about how you're moving your arm while you're aiming, which is bad, try to learn it by going into some wide scenario, going on a super low sense where you physically couldn't aim horizontally without implementing your arm for wide angles, and then just play in the scenario and you'll find after a few runs, you're just going to naturally start using your arm. Don't overthink this. Now let's go over to small angle horizontal movements. These are just your wrist flicks. You wrist goes right, mouse goes right. Wrist goes left, mouse goes left. This is why I cringe when I get a comment that says, I'm naturally a wrist aimer, I'm naturally an arm aimer. I don't use my arm, I don't use my wrist, I just arm aim, I just wrist aim, whatever. Nobody is naturally an anything aimer. You spent your first year on PC avoiding moving your arm or avoid moving your wrist and think that's now good or some kind of strategy. Just allow both things to move. That being said, there will be differences between people. There's a lot of personal choice and unconscious differences depending on my sense, setup, etc. But these should be more about how you move your arm and your wrist and how much of each you move, not whether you exclusively move one or the other. That's not good. If you are right now exclusively an arm aimer, to fix this, all you gotta do is go into some scenario on a somewhat high sense and just let your wrist move between the targets. High enough sense that the targets are one wrist flick apart. If after some time of doing this, you still don't find your wrist coming into play, temporarily, not permanently, just to be able to allow wrist motion since you don't use wrist motions, tape your arm down, let your wrist move a little, and then after five, 10 minutes, try and use them both at once. Switching to small vertical movements, this is where finger motion comes in. It's also where controversy comes in. 10 years ago, mice were bigger, mice were heavier. To stably hold a mouse, you needed to have pressure on it. Nowadays, you can go to Amazon, order a 27 gram wireless mouse that fits in your fingertips perfectly. Even larger mice tend to weigh under 60 grams, so you can afford some kind of grip that allows finger motion. A lot of games are mostly horizontal, so people think vertical small movements aren't important. That's not entirely true. A lot of times I'll be coaching players who get stuck on the shoulders of enemy character models and are unable to bring their crosshairs up. Opening up a bit of finger motion can help a lot with this. You don't have to go full fingertip grip, you can if you want to, but just allowing your fingers to make small adjustments they need to slide your crosshair onto the target is all that's really needed. If you want to go and experiment with smaller mice, that's great, go for it. If you don't, that's fine too, just as long as you can get some kind of finger motion to get off the shoulders and onto the head, you should be fine. If you don't already use finger motion, to learn it, start moving your fingers up and down and then just grab a mouse and try and keep these motions going and if you try this and you can't get it it is a hard thing to figure out so don't worry about it at the end of the day it is what it is but if you really want to learn it just keep trying a little exercise where you move your mouse fingers not even trying to aim at anything and then start trying to aim at small close together targets with them and then you might find you can apply it in game the final basic movement is large vertical motions. You'll notice these can only come from your shoulder. You can bunch up your wrist and get carpal tunnel, but that's not good. And other than that, you can't move your fingers down that wide. You have to move your shoulder up and down if you want large vertical motions. This is why a fixed pivot point is usually kind of bad. If you ever want to be able to aim vertically, you need to be able to fluidly move your arm up and down with your shoulder. 
If you have a fixed pivot point and can't move your arm up and down, you can't aim for large vertical movements. That's why I emphasized not doing this so much in the previous video. A few other important notes to make moving your mouse easier. You can use an arm sleeve to reduce friction to help you flick a bit faster. And if you hold your mouse in a weird angle, you can download rocks, I'll rotate your mouse sensor, and this will basically make it so your mouse feels perpendicular again, making vertical movements feel vertical and horizontal ones feel horizontal. Thanks for watching, subscribe for more.